East, Central, Northwest area, I guess, Keith, I'm sorry. Um, but we just wanted to thank you again for coming. We are discussing self-determination this evening. Um, I just, for presentation purposes, we just ask that you leave your uh, cameras off and yourselves muted until the end. Um, we are also will be recording. So if you have any personal questions that you might want to ask specifically to your student, um, we are going to share some contact information with you. And there I can look at key schools again and get it right. So I stop embarrassing myself. And so Keith, if you don't mind showing our next slide. Oh, and also we are happy to share a copy of this PowerPoint with you. Uh, just email one of us and we will get it to you. We will also be recording the presentation so that will be available to you as well. And just in case you weren't sure and you uh, wanted to know, this is our the schools that each of us are assigned to. Okay, and hello everybody. Um, as Kelly said, uh, I'm Keith, I'm Keith Lorenz, and you'll see my email address again later if you have any questions um, about my schools or about this presentation. Um, Kelly just described this slide, or the, sorry, the previous slide about, um, with all of our contact information. Um, I'm just gonna talk quickly about the agenda today, what we're gonna be covering. Um, and my camera's on so you can see my face, but if my Wi-Fi slows down, I might turn it back off, but I'm glad, nice to meet you. Thank you for coming, nice to see you. Uh, we're gonna, we're introductions, we're doing that now. We're gonna kind of define what is self-determination, at least one definition. Um, Kelly had the opportunity to attend a conference in Arkansas earlier this year, or I guess and earlier this school year, and she got some uh, good information that she's gonna share with us. And we're gonna review a couple resources that can help be helpful. So the, this is gonna be resource heavy, things that you can, that we'll start to explore with you as far as the I Am Determined website and the PACER website. And then um, also a program at the Image Center will describe. And then remember that you can email either of us um, before, during, or after this presentation. And we're happy to send you a copy of the PowerPoint. There are a lot of hyperlinks in here so you can explore things further as we move along. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out to us. And the next slide that I'm talking about here is just kind of a continuation of, um, of what we're doing with a little more detail. It's a hyperlink for the I'm Determined website, which I'll talk about later, a hyperlink for PACER, which I'll talk about later. And then also there's a link there for the Image Center. So this, if you were able to attend our session back in November, um, this is kind of ex continuing on the topic of self-determination. We'll talk more about that shortly and the there will be a few slides about the i am determined website that we'll explore more as this presentation goes on so that's what we're going to get to and again any questions that come up at any point we're going to have a q a session at the end or feel free to uh put them in the chat anytime and thank you for joining us and here is more about self-determination what is self-determination? This definition comes from one of the websites that Keith just mentioned, um, the PACER website. Self-determination is believing you can control your own destiny. Self-determination is a combination of attitudes and abilities that lead people to set goals for themselves and to take the initiative to reach these goals. It is about being in charge, but is not necessarily the same thing as self-sufficiency or independence. It means making your own choices, learning to effectively solve problems, and taking control and responsibility for one's life. Practicing self-determination self -determination also means one experience, experiences the consequences of making choices. So like Keith was mentioning, I did get to go to a transition conference down in Arkansas um, at the beginning of November of 2022. And um, the conference was held by DCDT, which is the Division on Career Development and Transition. And the presenter of the overall um, presentation was from the I Am Determined website. So I thought it was a really great presentation to kind of 
connect some pieces uh, involving self-determination. So they refer to it as CAR because it takes a, a couple of different pieces for self-determination to happen. And like a car, you need a bunch of pieces to keep the car moving. Um, so the C in car stands for competence, the know-how. It consists of a feeling of able to act on the environment and reach a desired goal. The A stands for anatomy. The freedom too refers to the possibility of personally deciding what is best for oneself. And the R is relatedness, its connection with it's concerning the needs to maintain and establish relationships in a social environment. So just to kind of build on that a little bit more, competence, competence is having the wisdom to build on prior knowledge to solve the problems. So students need to have a baseline to have that prior knowledge. Some of the skills they were discussing that can help builds competence is problem solving, the skill of finding solutions to difficult or complex issues, um, self-awareness, basic understandings of one's own strengths, needs, and abilities, self-advocacy, the skills necessary to speak up and or defend a cause or person, and self efficiency. I'm going to totally mess that up. Efficacy. Oh, and I'm so sorry. This is real life right now. My dog is a mess, so I apologize. Um, usually I have somebody here to distract her, but not this evening. Um, and so that is the belief in one's own ability to seed and succeed in specific situations or accomplish specific tasks. So how could you build some of these skills? Um, you could provide positive, specific feedback. You could give students opportunities to respond, give them opportunities to practice. You also want to scaffold this. You don't want to start off huge where it's going to maybe put pressure on your student. You kind of want to start off small and build up those wins so you can re reduce anxiety when it comes to self-determination and letting others know um, what your wants and needs are. Um, you could build this through disability awareness. Um, you know, again, starting small with the self-advocacy. A lot of times, you know, we'll ask for students to share information at IEP meetings because that meet the meetings are all about them. Um, but you maybe want to ex expect for them to start like telling the team maybe some accommodations that might be helpful for them just to start building those skills. Um, some actions you might be able to take at home is having your student maybe take, give you a, a dinner option once a week, or if something they could practice at school could be telling a teacher about their disability and something that the teacher could do to help them succeed. So the next area is anatomy, and that is believing you can successfully plan, prepare, and manage any situation. It's feeling in control of what's happening. So again, this is kind of looking at um, choice making, which is the skill of selecting a path forward between two unknown options. Um, it's self-regulation, the ability to monitor and control one's own behavior actions and skills in various situations, um, decision-making, the skill of selecting a path forward based on various solutions that have been thoughtfully considered, and again, looking at self-awareness, self -awareness, which we kind of talked about on the other slide. Um, and so, again, how can you build this? So you want to build in choices. Um, you know, a lot of the times, in reading specifically, like they'll assign a specific reading to look at a content, something they're looking for, maybe, you know, what the author's message is or things like that. I mean, there's no rule that the students have to read the same thing. So maybe if they could read something of interest to them, um, you know, they could find that same message and share it that way. Um, give them opportunities to do some problem solving, um, delegate some responsibilities to them. 
And then allowing failure as a learning experience. Um, another quote that I really loved from this conference was, um, failure is only the middle, it's not the end. It's kind of what you do with those failures in moving forward that you grow from and learn from and kind of make the difference in how you handle something in the future. So um, again, you could build these through giving them opportunities to practice. Again, you know, saying that failure is not a bad word. You know, it, um, it happens to us, it's you learn from those mistakes and then asking for help. Um, you know, you'll hear it a lot, I'm sure, as students go forward through high school and post-secondary life. But teachers love when students ask questions because they would much rather be able to help a student know what they're doing and get them doing it the right way and that instead of having them do something completely wrong. And that's also a life skill um, when they begin to work, you know, their bosses or our supervisors are definitely going to prefer them to ask questions um, before doing a task they maybe might not understand. So some practicing also for this um, at home, maybe letting them decide when to complete chores. Um, I know, for my parents and I, we had some fights back in the day about when I completed things, but um, maybe we could have avoided those situations if um, like I had more of a say in what time I did it or, you know, it, I don't know, but that's kind of the concept. Um, in school, as they get older, you could um, help them, let them select classes, especially um, looking at classes that might match with their career plans in the future. And then maybe also looking at ways they could um, demonstrate their understanding. Um, instead of maybe just doing a written assignment, they could write a poem or do a rap or something that's more them where they still get their point across. And then lastly, the R is relatedness. And that's um, a feeling, a sense of belonging, feeling at home within your community while building supportive relationships to share your strengths. And we've gone over most of these except for the goal setting and attainment, which is the ability to develop a goal, plan for implementation, and measure success. So you want to give them opportunities for practice um, and be included. So there might be a chess club or something of that that already exists at your school and your student wants to join chess but is like nervous and wants to start a chess club with maybe just their friends. You know, getting them to join together and build those skills and, you know, build that relationship from the common knowledge, um, you know, building those peer relationships, kind of knowing about their disability awareness um you know and the thing is is like disabilities really are just people learning having different learning styles and learning differently so being comfortable sharing um how they best learn and having common goals that you guys might want to work on um you want your student to obviously be aware of their strengths and goals, that they're not, not defined by their disability. And just, again, give lots of time to practice. Um, and of course, the examples for this are you know, joining a community group based on interests, maybe like a, a basketball team or something out in your community, or it's or at school, you know, joining a club, or the sports team, or just an activity that might they might the students have some common interests in um i just thought this was really good information to share gave me a lot to think about in self-determination so i appreciate you listening to this part of the presentation about you know some of the components on building self-determination um keith is going to start going through some of those website resources we discussed in the beginning all right hello again Excuse me. So this website, and again, email us if you'd like a copy of this presentation. Um, this this link is on there. Um, I won't take your time by going there now, but these are this is a little screenshot you'll see. 
Um, you can filter it. It's got it's a pretty user-friendly website. You can filter it by the resource format, whether it's just different things that can help as far as self-determination goes. And resource type, whether it's a video or a paper format or a digital format. Grade level, I know a lot of the folks on this call are um, middle schoolers or parents of middle schoolers. Uh, so you can filter it by grade level. Audience, some of the things are for educators. Some of the things on this website are for uh, families, some for students. And I'll give you some examples in a minute. And then topic, there are lots of good topics. And I picked some to share with you here. Um, opportunities to practice self-determination, uh, self-awareness. We can all benefit from self-awareness. Self-advocacy, of course, well, we've heard that before, advocating for yourself, uh, speaking your needs, uh, goal setting. Um, we can all benefit from setting goals. And then decision-making skills and more. There's more resources on there, but I wanted to just highlight those as things that I thought might benefit the audience today. And if you don't mind, I'm going to play a quick video, that um, just a two-minute video or so, that touches on these resources. The I'm Determined Project has put a great deal of time into working with parents, educators, and students to create easy-to-use tools. These tools help youth to develop components of self-determination and use them in their everyday lives. The One Pager, Good Day Plan, and Goal Plan are three of our most familiar tools. Let's look at each one. The One Pager is a simple tool that provides important information about your child to an unfamiliar person. It outlines four categories, strengths, preferences, interests, and needs in a visual way that fits on one piece of paper. As a parent, you can help your child identify and express these categories and consider people and places to share. The One Pager helps to clarify an individual's profile and assist with transition into new environments. The Good Day Plan helps your child identify factors associated with a good day. It allows your child and those working with your child to look at the day and consider routines and structures that assist in making days good. The Good Day Plan is split into four columns. Good Day, which answers the question, what happens on a good day? Now, which answers the question, does it happen now? Action, which answers the question, what needs to happen to make it a good day? And Support, which answers the question, who can help me? Initially, most parents find themselves showing up in the support column, but as children build their self-determination skills, they start to identify broader networks of support that will assist them in being successful. The I'm Determined Goal Plan is a visual representation of the steps needed to accomplish an identified goal. As a graphic organizer, it provides short-term steps and attainment outcomes around a common goal. Parents play a huge role in helping their children reach their goals by thinking alongside their youth in defining the steps to accomplish the goals. These tools are available in many formats, including paper templates, iOS apps, and web apps. They are available for free on our website, and you can use them, change them, and personalize them for your child to use as they need. These three tools are just a few strategies that you can use as a parent to help your child become more self-determined. Just keep this in mind. The goal of these tools is not to have them carrying around the sheets of paper wherever they go. The goal is that the skills become internalized so that when your child comes to challenge, they have strategies and a network of support that they can use to be successful. Okay, so one of my main goals in um, sharing this video is and these resources is I wanted to, but if you're like me, if you go to a website that has a lot going on, um, it might be overwhelming and you might not explore everything. So I tried to pick and choose things that I thought you might benefit from. And so this first one is on resources, and you can see that it's the hyperlink for resources that you might want to explore. This next one is um, youth, so it's the it's the their their youth section, and that video just described it. But I'm just going to highlight things that I thought might be helpful. Um, first, we have this one pager which they just described um, as far as getting to know what's important, and you can click on that and explore it more in the website. You can do that right now, or you can uh, I can also email us, and I'll send you this PowerPoint. Um, the good day plan, we could all use a plan for it to have a good day and this and especially uh, adolescents can benefit from learning how to make their day better. Uh, so that, there's that. And then goal plans. Like I said earlier, we can all benefit from setting goals and knowing how to set goals. Sometimes, especially when the younger folks don't know how to set goals or what, what is a good goal or what that looks like. 
So this kind of helps to guide that conversation, guide that process. So take a look at those, email us if you have any questions, check in with your transition facilitator, your school if you have any questions. The next site is families. So same website, but the family section. And I'm just gonna be quiet for a minute uh, or so while you read these. I don't wanna read them to you. And then I'm gonna just kind of mention a couple highlights. I'm gonna try to keep myself quiet for at least a few seconds here while you read this slide. And my apologies if I'm interrupting your uh, your reading. I just uh, don't want to keep you too much from dinner. If I'm keeping you from dinner, hopefully you're having dinner right now anyway. But um, critical decision points is one thing. And Kelly and I, when we were talking about this presentation, um, Ke Kelly pointed out, and I agreed that the first couple of sentences here are pretty pretty useful as far as uh, goal setting. Parents and caregivers have certain goals in mind when their children go to school. And sometimes those goals aren't aligned and sometimes we don't know which goal, what the goals are. So it's good to have conversations about that and talk through it. And regardless of whether children have disabilities or not, all parents want them to learn, explore and experience as much as they possibly can. And uh, so do we as transition facilitators. So I won't belabor this point, but um, here's the link for the family section that I'd encourage you to check out and also email us for the PowerPoint. And I'm gonna hand it over to Kelly in a minute. And I love the title of her next slide and she will describe where we're going from here. So this video is also from the I Am Determined website. It's how do I help my child be self-determination? And we've kind of talked about a lot of things tonight. Um, so in regards to the I'm Determined website and self-determination, and giving you kind of like the car example. But um, I think that it's really important as a family unit to kind of look at how you can help your build determination at home, because it's just, again, something that you can practice really all the time in lots of different settings. So more self-determination is never a bad thing. So Keith, do you mind starting our video? As we continue along the pathway to success, we now look at how you can help your child be self-determined. Having self-determination is a good thing for every individual, but it's often hard to know how to build the skills that make up self-determination. One simple way to think about it is to consider how many opportunities your child has had to practice an idea or skill. Chambers, 2007, says that youth and adults with disabilities are less self-determined than their non-disabled peers due mainly to fewer opportunities to make choices and express preferences across their daily lives. To visually represent this, let's replace opportunity with the word allowed. Student A is allowed to share his opinion, make choices, share his preferences, and act in ways that use his strengths and talents. Student B, while capable of contributing ideas, isn't allowed or given opportunities in his day to share his opinion, make personal choices, or share preferences and strengths with others, and instead is told what and how to be by other people. Who is more likely to be self-determined, student A or student B? You're right, student A. Why? Because he or she has more chances, more opportunity to speak up and tell others what it is that he or she would like to have happen in their lives. Now that we understand that self-determination grows when students have opportunities, we need to think about the everyday places where youth have potential opportunities. Three main places come to mind, home, school, and community. Let's look at each of these separately and generate some ideas about opportunities students have at home, school, and in the community. as we continue along the pathway to success. Oh, I'm sorry, technical difficulties. I think 
that must have cut off a little bit, but <clears throat> I apologize. But hopefully you kind of get the idea of how important self-determination is to students and their growth um, in becoming adults and learning about themselves. So we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about a couple other resources for you other than I am determined information. And um, all of these videos are available on the through the hyperlinks that we've uh, that we've provided. If you have any trouble finding them, just let us know. Um, as far as pacer.org is the next thing I'm going to talk about. And again, I just wanted to kind of it's if, if you go to a website and it's overwhelming, I wanted to kind of make it a little less overwhelming and just kind of show you where I'd recommend starting. So when you go to this website, if you scroll, go down to independent and community living, and then there's an area for self-determination, there are these categories that you see here. Um, and so you can, I'll, I, won't, I won't read all these to you, but I'll give a couple of highlights. Um, how can my child be involved in the IEP process? So as far as um, whether that's participating in the annual review or participating in the, in the writing and production of the IEP, participating with the case manager and goal setting. Um, once a student is going to turn is 14 or going to turn 14, transition becomes part of the IEP and they could, and um, it's, I, I certainly would encourage you to reach out to your transition facilitator with any questions about that. The case manager should also have contacts information for us. And then self-advocacy, there's terms and descriptions as far as what these terms mean that we're talking about. And then they have other online resources as far as self-determination. So successful transition. Um, generally, that's often talking about transition from high school to the real world, but that can start now. It can start, um, well, it's, self, it's, a, no, it's not too early to talk about transition and talk about careers, talk about whether a student wants to go to college, community college, trade school, none of the above. It's good to start having those conversations. Um, and they can, they can split it up as far as middle school and high school, and then post-secondary, meaning after high school, what does self-determination look like? So you can pick and choose. I won't um, direct you on that, but if you have any trouble finding these resources or interpreting these resources, let us know. And again, email us for any of these, uh, any of these links or any of these slides. And the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the Image Center. The Image Center is a local organization um, that they're based in Towson, but they work with um, students all over Baltimore County and other counties. And they have a program, they have several programs, but the one I'm gonna highlight today is about self-awareness and self-advocacy. And if you email us for this presentation, you'll see a link here to learn more about the Image Center. And you will also, but I'll give you some highlights. So this particular training is geared towards students age 14 to 22. Uh, Adores, meaning the Division of Rehabilitation Services is a state organization. And they um, would like students with disabilities to um, be referred or refer themselves or the parent refers, I'll describe that in a second, um, beginning in ninth grade. And so when the student gets to ninth grade, you can connect with doors and the MS Center can walk you through this too. They can help you out with this. Um, I will quickly click on this link because, well, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that. So I'm not gonna do that for right now. But the doors link, this doors link that I have hyperlinked here is pretty user friendly. It just um, walks you through how to work through it and how to um, refer. But your transition facilitator, once the students in ninth grade, can also help with that as well. I spoke to the Image Center last week just to make sure I was up to speed on this particular program. And one of the things they told me that's new to me is since the in the pandemic they started doing more virtual and one on one sessions. I can't speak for the Image Center. I can't promise that they'll do that because they still have some group sessions. But um, ask about the one-on-one -on -one sessions, if that's something that might interest your student, and that might be something that's available. I can't promise anything on their behalf, but I can tell you that that's something that they experience, experimented with during the pandemic, and they found some success with it, so it sounds like they're continuing with that. They can help with uh, goal setting. They can help with empowerment for teens and young adults to explore skills of self-awareness and self-advocacy. They can talk to students about, and they, the part of their curriculum is talking to students about disability disclosure. So if a student's working, which um, it's great if students get an after-school job or a summer job if that fits their schedule and if the parents and guardians are okay with it. Uh, it's totally up to the student if they want to disclose a disability to an employer. And it can be a difficult decision and something that's difficult to think about. So they can help talk through that process. And why not talk about that at 14 rather than at uh, 21 when they're starting another job? Why not you know, start getting through that trial and error process now? And um, 
and they also can provide a bunch of student and family resources that uh, can enable future outcomes. So again, um, here's their email address, uh, youthservices at imagemaryland.org, and then there's their phone number. Um, chances are you'll hear from somebody named Jessica, but everyone there is very nice, and they'll be able to help you and tell you more about the program, and then you can collaborate and decide if it's a good fit. So before I, I'm going to hand it back to Kelly, who I believe is going to take us to uh, questions to Q&A. So again, we just really want to thank you for joining us tonight. Um, and hopefully we gave you some insights into self-determination. Um, we are here for some questions if you have it. If uh, We are going to share that transition facilitator information page again. If you want to email your school-specific uh, transition facilitator, you know, we also are good resources if you need some ideas about, you know, building self-determination, self-advocacy, um, you know, anything like that. So definitely feel free to reach out to us. Um, but that's the end of our program or presentation tonight. Um, we'll hang out again for a little bit, a few more questions or anything like that. Um, just thank you again for coming. <laughs> Yes, thank you again for coming and please reach out to us anytime. You can see Kelly and Keith here, um, Kelly and I, and then uh, the other two transition facilitators who work with middle schools are also here and they're also fantastic and, and available and happy to help Lacey and Marta. So please feel free to put any questions in the chat or let us know if you have any questions by email. Hello, Miss Sylvia Marroquin. I believe you have a question. I do. Hi, good evening. I'm sorry I was late to the meeting, so I missed it. Is there any way I can listen to the recorded? There will be a recording. Um, we, uh, we have a website now where we can start putting these recordings. Sometimes we have to wait for that to work through the, um, the county system before it can be posted. So if you want to get it sooner than later, I might be able to get authorized to send it to you um, sooner than that. So feel free to email me. But um, send one of us an email and let us know that you want the recording and we can get it to you. And so I'll put our email addresses in the chat just in case you didn't you didn't get them earlier. Um, but Kelly's is already there, I believe. But I'll put my email address in here. Too. OK, my my question would have been if my son is not in the Canesville area for high school, he's assigned to Lans Lansdowne. I think we're new to the neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. If I want to apply to that other school, how do I do that or they go to strictly with the address? Well, that is going to be um, outside of my area of expertise. Kelly, you can feel free to jump in, but we are more talking about sort of the transition from school to the real world, meaning like from, from now until high school until the real world. And so as far as um, transition from middle school to high school, I would usually refer you to the guidance counselor as more of an expert in that. But Kelly, anything to add to that? Unfortunately, I don't, I'm so sorry. Uh, this is Marta, I'm the transition facilitator for the area that you're looking at. Um, typically, what grade is your child in? He's an eighth grader now in Arbutus Middle School. Okay, if he's a, if he's in eighth grade right now, the Magnet program um, closed their applications in November. Um, we had done some information about that. Typically, they're going to base that on your address. If there is a process to be able to request something else, but I you would need to reach out to the school to find out. Okay, I will. Thank you so much. You're welcome.
So we don't mean to cut anybody off, but did anybody else have any questions that we could answer for the good of the cause? Thank you. Have a great evening. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. And have a great evening. Thank you. You too. Thank you, you too.